This is San Diego News Daily. I'm Jackie Crea. At least one suspect is still on the run after two people died in a shootout at a Grantville apartment complex this week. Investigators say there was an altercation among a group of people near the pool Friday night where at least one person, possibly two, pulled out a gun and shot two people. They both died at the hospital. SDPD initially detained a group of people following that shooting, but no one was found to be a suspect and they were all released. At least 10 people, including children, are in the hospital after rescue crews say they fell while trying to climb over the U.S.-Mexico border fence. This happened around 4 p.m. yesterday at Monument Road and Hollister Street. Members of the San Diego Fire Rescue Team helped respond to the injured migrants. They say some suffered broken bones. We are just days away from Tuesday's California primary, which means this is the last weekend for early voting. There are nearly 180 voting centers open across the county right now. They'll be open from 8 to 5 today and tomorrow and from 7 to 8 on Tuesday. For San Diegans in the North County, Democrat Mike Levin wants to hold on to his seat representing the 49th district. His party hopes to win back the House of Representatives this year in a region where the environment, economy and veterans affairs are top of mind. NBC 7's Joey Safshik breaks down why this is such a battleground district. Democrats tend to dominate coastal districts up and down California, but the 49th here is deeply purple. Although one political analyst tells us if Mike Levin is able to hold on to his seat for another term, this could become a Democratic stronghold, and that would be in line with the blue wave we've seen in much of the region over recent years. If Mike Levin wins a convincing victory here in San Diego's congressional delegation remains almost entirely Democratic, that will really signal uh, where the region is going. It's a district split down county lines and party lines. Mike Levin is a good congressman. I want to make sure that I get to have him for the general election. We just want somebody that represents us, and absolutely, we need a change. For 16 years, the 49th was represented by Republican Daryl Issa. But then the tides in this coastal district changed. Democrat Mike Levin has held on to the seat for the past six years, and he's running for two more. It's been the battleground district, the battleground for for San Diego, for California, and really one of the top battlegrounds in the nation. Mike Levin is the sole Democrat in this primary. He faces four Republican challengers, two of whom political science professor Thad Kauser says have gained traction. We have Matt Gunderson, uh, who ran a, a tight race in, in a local state Senate race two years ago, and political newcomer Margarita Wilkinson. But he says Levin likely still has the upper hand. We see as incumbents, once they win and, and defend themselves one or two races, they usually become more secure in a district. Plus, it's a presidential election year. Those usually bring big coattails, a larger electorate, and bring in more of those younger voters who tend to lean Democratic. And much of what we're watching in that congressional race is actually mirrored by what we're seeing in the County Board of Supervisors race that represents this district. Although Kauser says that the Republican in that race, Kevin Faulkner, has a lot more name recognition as he tries to unseat incumbent Democrat Tara Lawson Reamer than his counterparts in the congressional race. So that is certainly something we're keeping an eye on ahead of Tuesday. Joey Sapchik, NBC7. NBC7 meteorologist Brooke Martell will have a look at your weather right after this. Looking for NBC San Diego on Roku? The easiest way to find us is with Roku voice commands. Just press the microphone button on your remote and say live TV and then say NBC San Diego. If you don't have voice commands on your remote, just scroll down to live TV, click the purple icon, Go over to the left and navigate to news. Then head on down to NBC San Diego News. Once you've got us, make sure you add us to your favorites and we'll always be right there for you. NBC San Diego News on Roku. We're ending the weekend with some more rainfall potential, plus some windy conditions over those high, higher elevations. We have a high wind warning still in effect until 10 o'clock tonight. 
for the mountain communities. We're looking at those wind gusts to be from about 45 to 60 miles per hour. And then just east of there, wind advisory still in place for our desert region also until 10 o'clock tonight as we brace for some more breezy and at times gusty westerly winds. Out at the coastline, we are under a high surf advisory through Monday morning. We're looking at these wave heights to be from four to seven feet. Low tide will make a return around 1030 this morning. Rip current risk will be strong. The hourly forecast shows chances of rain throughout the morning, but then we start to dry out heading into your afternoon. We're looking at periodic sunshine mixed with cloud cover. Temperatures though trending below seasonal norms right around the low 60s again for the immediate coast, but even a little bit cooler over portions of our inland valleys where we also have rain chances as we head into this afternoon. We have upper 50s to about the low 60s over the higher elevations, low to mid 40s for your Sunday mid 60s over our desert region and timing out the rain over the next 12 hours, getting a break from it as I showed you as we continue through the morning, but then rain chances start to increase as we head into about two, three o'clock, four o'clock, and then going into later tonight, we start to see them back off a little bit, but we still have the chance for some scattered shower activity that could continue into early Monday morning. I'll send it back over to you. Bird lovers have their eyes trained on Big Bear today as they hope to catch the hatching of some of bald eagle chicks. Excitement is mounting that two world famous eagles, Jackie and Shadow, could see their three eagle chicks hatch in the coming days. This week, fans of the birds have been closely watching for pips or small cracks in the eggs that would indicate it's ready to hatch. Experts say after pips appear, hatching can take between one and three days. There's more coverage you can count on at NBC7.com. You can always find us on your Roku or Samsung Smart TV app. Thank you for watching. I'm Jackie Crea.